Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Mancuso and it is Tuesday, so we are on to our next question. So here we go. They are giving us um, wavelength and relative absorbance. All right, and then they're giving us the color of light that you get for each wavelength. And it says an absorption spectrum indicates the relative amount of light absorbed across a range of wavelengths. The graphs above represent the absorption spectra of individual pigments isolated from two different organisms. One of the pigments is chlorophyll A, commonly found in green plants. The other is bacterial robson, commonly found in purple photosynthe photosynthetic bacteria. The table above shows the approximate ranges of wavelengths of different colors in the visible light spectrum. Okay. So I'm going to call one A and one B, and my A is the one that has chlorophyll A, and it's green. And the other one I'm calling B because bacteria Robson, and it's found in purple. Okay, because the color obviously tells you um, what color it reflects. It reflects that color, and that's why it appears that color. All right, let's keep going here with our questions. First question, explain why measuring light absorbance is a good indication of the amount of photosynthesis occurring. Okay, I need to explain, because that is my verb, um, why measuring light absorbance is a good in, uh, indication of the amount of photosynthesis. Okay, so I would put in the light reaction, photosystems. need to absorb light to excite electrons and pass them through an electron transport chain. Um, if I had more time, I would actually keep going. I would say this leads to the production of NADPH and the buildup of a proton gradient. for the production of ATP, both NADPH and ATP are needed for the Kelvin cycle to produce G3Ps or sugars. Okay, so a little bit of a long answer for something that's probably one point, but again, if you can do it quickly, write as much as you can. All right, next question. Identify the experimental question posed by the researchers. So what were the researchers asking? So they're showing us different wavelengths and um, it indicates the relative amount of light uh, absorbed across wavelengths. Okay, so I think they are basically Identify the experimental question. Uh, what wavelengths of light do two different organisms use? most efficiently for photosynthesis. It's definitely more than one question you could ask here. Maybe you were also thinking um, what color wavelength of light 
are used by organisms of different colors. All right, next one. Justify the need to measure across the entire visible light spectrum. Okay, so the two organisms were different colors. So you need to include the entire visible light spectrum to see what each absorbs. You can't limit the colors, the wavelengths. Or assume. All right, so basically you can't just include the colors that you know green will absorb. If you've got a purple plant, you got to make sure you put all the different colors out there, have it all available, have all the wavelengths available. Okay, next one. Identify the pigment used to generate the absorption spectrum in each of the graphs above. Using evidence from the data, justify your choices. Okay, so I got to figure out which one is the A1 and which one is the B1. So graph one, its absorbance is highest here, which is um, in the like 575 area. So 575. So it is absorbing yellow. It is definitely absorbing in the green. So I'm going to just right here it absorbs green. And now because I know it absorbs green, I know it's not going to be the, the chlorophyll A1 because that wouldn't be able to absorb green. But I'm also going to check and find purple. So purple. Um, well, violet is right here, 380 to 450. Okay, yeah, low in the purple. So I'm going to say that graph one shows absorption. Spectra for Okay, now I gotta go back and spell it. Bacteriorhodopsin. Okay, and then um, I that was identifying it, and now I have to justify it because it reflects. Violet, purple, and absorbs other colors like yellow and green well. It is purple, so doesn't Absorb purple. It reflux. Oh, I already wrote that. I already wrote it. I could stop right there. Okay, and then graph two shows absorption spectra. Obviously, I'd write it all out if I was writing my essay for chlorophyll. So now I just want to go back for a second and make sure that in the green area, yes, yeah, so this is showing me that it reflects green, and I'm guessing it's going to absorb uh, reds and blues, so that early 400s, yeah, blue. Awesome. And then over here in the late 600 to 700s, red. Perfect. Blue and red. Okay. 
nachos for chlorophyll A because it reflects, because it is green and reflects green light and absorbs red and blue light best. Okay, next one. In an experiment, identical organisms containing the pigment from graph one, oh no, I'm sorry, that says graph two. <laughs> graph two is the predominant light capturing pigment are separated into three groups. The organisms in each group are illuminated with a light of a single wavelength, 650 for the first group, 550 for the second group, and 430 for the third group. The three light sources are of equal intensity and all organisms are illuminated for equal lengths of time. Predict the relative rate of photosynthesis in each of the three groups. Ooh, this reminds me of the experiment that we did with the little spinach inside the cuvettes and um, looking at how the light caused more photosynthesis to happen and changed the DPIP from blue to clear. We could have actually used um, like different colored wavelengths to see how it happened. All right, so 650, 550, and 430. And I have to say how well they're going to do. 650, 550, 430. All right, I'm going to erase this stuff. Whoops. So I can see a little clearer. And let me use this green. It's graph two, right? Yeah. All right, so the first one is 650, so that's like somewhere in there. 550 is terrible, and ooh, what was the other one, 430? That's awesome. Okay, so 430 is going to do the best job. Predict the relative rate. This will have the highest relative rate due to the greatest absorption. So if it can use the light, it can excite the electrons and make more NADPH, make more ATP, do more photosynthesis. And then um, the 550 is going to have the lowest relative rate because it has the least absorption of light. And this will have an intermediate rate because it has an intermediate level of absorption. Okay. And then I'm just going to add, just to clarify, the more light absorbed indicates higher level of light reaction. Okay, next. The production of ATP during the light reaction is required for the Kelvin cycle to occur. Describe the process through which ATP is made in the light reaction. Okay, so just as a little refresher, if this is my chloroplast, and these are my grana. The grana have that thylakoid membrane. And remember, light is coming in, in here and absorbed by a photosystem. And they boink, 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 pass the electrons along until eventually it makes an ADPH. And then as the electrons are being moved, their energy is used to pump H plus into this space. And that builds up a proton gradient. And then eventually that proton gradient builds up and this ATP synthase lets those H plus out. And as it lets it out, this spins and turns and it puts ADP and PI together and it makes ATP. So this is the process that I wanna describe. So uh, describe the process through which ATP is made in the light reaction. Okay, so as the electrons move through the electron transport chain. Again, I would write that all out. Um, as the electrons move through the electron transport chain, um, their energy is used 
to pump protons into the thylakoid space, the lumen, from low to high concentration. So that's why it shows that it needs energy because it's moving it against the gradient. The buildup of H plus is a proton gradient. Used in chemiosmosis. So chemiosmosis is that we're describing the whole buildup of a proton gradient and then using ATP synthase. So H plus flow out of ATP synthase channel which phosphorylates ADP to ATP. So that's how I get my ATP. So I just check, make sure I answered everything, describe the process through which ATP is made. Yep. All right. Next one. Predict the effect of a tear in the thylakoid membrane. Ooh, okay. So here was my thing. Oh, and it also is fine to add these diagrams to it. Um, just make sure that you label it. That's my ATP synthase. This is my proton gradient. Now, the one disadvantage is you're going to have to uh, upload it if you do that. So make sure you give yourself enough time if you do draw a picture. And remember, if you do have everything written out, the picture might not necessarily be necessary. They're not going to necessarily give you extra points for a diagram. Just if you feel like it's really worth it and you do have time to upload it, go ahead. All right, so predict the effect of a tear in the thylakoid membrane. So this was my thylakoid membrane right here. So predict a tear. Um, a tear would prevent um, H plus proton gradient to be created. This would decrease ATP production leading to a decrease in the Kelvin cycle as well because you need both of them. You need NADPH and AD, ATP to be able to go through that Kelvin cycle and do that. All right, next, justify your prediction. Oh, I just did. So a tear would um, prevent this from being created. Uh, so I'm just going to put the and justify. I'll just add which requires both NADPH and ATP to make sugars, G3Ps. Okay, so we did our justifying. Photorespiration may occur in some plants. Discuss photorespiration, why it occurs, and some strategies that plants have evolved to avoid it. Okay, so photorespiration is when the enzyme rubisco fixes O2 instead of CO2. This does not make G3Ps and is a 
waste of energy and materials. Okay, this occurs. when the plant is in an area of um, very low water potential, so very hot and dry. And it responds by closing its stomates, which increases the O2 levels because it doesn't let it out. Um, remember that the O2 is produced by photolysis. And it decreases the amount of CO2 available because it is not letting it in. Okay, so if it's super hot and dry, it's going to close the stomates, which leads to more and more oxygen inside of the leaf and less and less carbon dioxide coming into the leaf. So Rubisco can screw up. So ways plants have evolved. So again, evolution's due to um, you know changes in the genes, usually by something like a mutation. So um, there are uh, C4 plants and CAM plants. These both use a different enzyme to initially fix CO2. And that different enzyme is PEP carboxylase. PEP carboxylase does not fix O2. So this reduces photorespiration. All right, there we go. Let me just go back, make sure I answered all parts of the question. I uh, discussed what photorespiration is, why it happens, and some strategies. All right, so that's your essay for today. Hope you guys are doing great. Let me know if you have questions.